Good morning and welcome. We are glad that you're able to be with us as we do uh, have our annual Remembrance Day service. And we hope that you have had a chance to find the worship liturgy or the, or the worship bulletin as all of the responses are there. And we hope that you will be able to follow along at home. Excuse me. We are uh, here this morning, and while we would love to have you here, uh, you, we are aware that a number of things have been happening out there. Uh, as I'm sure you are aware, the province has uh, changed the, um, the coding and is going to be putting our area into a red zone. Things have not been getting better, and things have been, uh, as a result of that, things are starting to be shut down. And I just wanted to mention that in the bulletin, and there, are, uh, there is an announcement that the session after meeting at the beginning of November uh, last Monday reflected on the opening date of the 29th and uh, has decided to push the, re the reopening to January 3rd. This was in light of the fact that even on Monday last week, the cases were rising, and now we don't quite know when we can reopen. But we are uh, still working towards that, and it is still our hope. We will review the situation at our December meeting, which will be at the beginning of uh, the first Monday of December, and we may see what we can do regarding uh, Christmas Eve in particular. But having said all of that, we are uh, encouraging you to stay home, stay safe, wear a mask, and uh, tune in for worship. We would love to have you with us. There are a number of announcements in the bulletin, but I want to once again acknowledge that uh, uh, Mae Jackson has uh, stepped down as treasurer. And as the uh, bulletin says, uh, at least uh, uh, in the su summary session, the session has expressed its gratitude and thanks to Mae for her hard work, 18 years of dedication. That's a long time, especially in a church. And we are thankful for all that she has done for St. Andrews. So we, uh, to let you know, if you read the session summary, you will find that there are um, uh, th that the session appointed a transition team and that we have a transitional treasurer uh, appointed to go through the next year. And we are thankful for Anna Marie and for Stan Laurie for stepping up and agreeing to be part of those teams. We uh, want to, well, I just want to draw you to that bulletin. There's so much in that bulletin. Uh, but I just wanted to also mention the point, uh, the poinsettia sale. All of the details for the poinsettia sale are there, and I would hope that you would uh, uh, go through that and uh, follow the directions as to how to make the make your orders and uh, support St. Andrews by doing that, but also by bringing some color into your house and hopefully a little bit of the Christmas and festive spirit that is so lacking right now uh, with everything that is going on. So uh, there are a lot of things, as I say, in the announcement, in the bulletin, in the session summary uh, that you can read and you can go through. There's uh, a, a little picture display of telegrams, which will be made clear in a couple of minutes, as well as uh, a story about a, a Canadian soldier who had been unknown, but who's now, who now has been named. And uh, I included that because it was uh, appropriate for the theme of today. So uh, as we prepare to approach God in worship, let us take a few moments in silent prayer and meditation. Amen. I invite Regan to come and light the Christ candle. We light the Christ candle to remind us that Jesus is with us as we listen for the word of the Lord.
In Flanders fields the poppies blow between the crosses row on row that mark our place and in the sky the larks still bravely sing, fly, scarce heard among, amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you from failing hands we throw the torch, be yours to hold high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. As peoples whose lives were won for us through the sacrifice of others, through the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ, let us gather to know God together as we remember the sacrifices made for our freedom in gratitude and in worship. Let us pray. God of grace and eternal peace, on this day we look back and remember with gratitude those who died in the times of war. We also give you our thanks and praise for your son Jesus Christ, who died for us. Almighty God, from whose love in Christ we cannot be parted by death or by life, we give you thanks this day for all that makes our common life secure for all the peace and freedoms we enjoy, and for the opportunity that is ours of building a better world for generations to come. Loving God, as we remember those who died to make our lives possible, we remember your life, your death, your sacrifice for our salvation. We remember the story of your saving grace, your love, your mercy, and your presence with us, and we give you thanks. Amen. I want to uh, ask uh, Peter to get the video ready. Uh, I encourage you to use the bulletin to find, there's a link there to uh, a, a video that I recorded of Muriel Gemmel telling her story for, uh, for us for our Remembrance Day service. And we're going to play the, the video. You should hear the audio, and we uh, hope that you will enjoy it. It is uh, stories by Muriel about what it was like to be a 16-year-old girl in Renfrew uh, whose job was to deliver the telegrams to families who are anxious about their loved ones. Peter? However, the most part, the part I did not enjoy was that I knew practically everybody in the town because I belonged to Presbyterian Church and it was packed all the time. So uh, I knew all those people and um, I dreaded going to any place with a telegram. However, as I say, I was responsible for delivering them and one day, I'll tell you two little episodes that happened. One day, this lady who lived directly across the street from us, she came into the office about two o'clock in the afternoon, and her son was over, her oldest son was overseas, and in Germany, I think, and she wanted to wire him money. So she did, and Mr. Somerville, my boss, took the money and sent it to her, sent it to him. I said to her, oh, Mrs. Gochi, now you've walked all the way from home uptown, so where are you going? Are you going back home or are you going to stop in some shop? And she happened to tell me, it was just a sort of a common conversation. She said, yes, I'm going to the baby store. I haven't been uptown for a long time. Just at that, she walked out of the store and went up to the baby store, I guess. Or I don't know whether she stopped on the way, but a telegram came in saying her son, Jack, had been killed in action. Now, 
Mr. Somerville Premier had fainted mm. because she had just been in our place. He had taken the money and he had sent. So anyway, I said, well, I don't want to give her the bad news, but, and he said, well, no, but I can't leave the shop, so you've got to go. So I went up. I didn't have the telegram with me, but I went up and I just told her, I met her and I said, Mr. Somerville would like to speak to you about something about the money going over to Jack. Told her why. But it was the only way I could face it. So anyway, she came down the street with me. And I was just dreading when we got there. But anyway, he told her. And she went and uh, I think that she got in touch with somebody to, I think, uh, got Mr. Somerville into a bit of trouble mm -hmm. because he didn't follow what she thought he should be doing. And she swore that he had known that he had the telegram when she was in there. Mm -hmm. He did not. I knew that. And there was another girl that worked in the uh, shop with me, and she knew, too, in the office. She knew that it was all, you know, above board. However, that was one episode. Shortly after that, there was a, a message came in about 5 o'clock in the afternoon, and it was for over in a place called Anacostai. And it was a section of the town that was quite a piece away, and I definitely needed to go on my bicycle. So I went over there, and I didn't know the lady that was getting it, but her husband had been killed. Mm. And when I got there, I when, as I got there, I dreaded going to her house, regardless of whether I knew her or not. But anyway, I thought in my mind, I'm going to go next door to her neighbor, because the houses were pretty close together, and I'll get her to come with me. Maybe that'll soften the blow. So I did. However, that woman was really French, and I couldn't understand what she was saying. <laughs> so, but anyway, I told her about the telegram, and I said, would you come with me to her? Well, she sort of hesitated, but she came. Well, Mrs., or the lady, I forget, she was a Polish lady, and she had a Polish name, so can't really remember what her name was, but uh, she just broke down right there, and I didn't know what to do, mm. and try to comfort her, only a, 16 year old trying to comfort her <laughs> so anyway uh, apparently she went right directly to her priest mm. they were very good Catholics mm. and she reported that a 16 year old should not be in, you know left with this responsibility of delivering telegrams. Mm. It must have been hard. It, it was terribly hard. So, so anyway, uh, I want to thank Muriel for offering us this story. Uh, his video is much longer. Uh, it's, uh, in fact, we ran out of space on my phone, but I would encourage you to watch the video uh, it is a, a moving story of something you wouldn't have thought about in terms of what to think about with Remembrance Day. But on the home front, there were uh, often moments of joy, uh, of celebration, but often uh, periods of long waiting, of long anxiety, of fear. And a little later on, you'll hear how Muriel talks about how 
the people she knew in Renfrew would literally cross the street to go to the other side in case she was coming towards them to give them bad news. Uh, it is hard to be a messenger at times. And uh, again, I, I want to thank uh, Muriel and Wally for letting me in and for uh, uh, entertaining me while we had those conversations. But let us uh, continue with our service with the uh, call to remembrance. And if you are able uh, at home, I would invite you to stand so that we can indeed uh, do this, uh, the call to remembrance, uh, as we would here at church. And I want to invite uh, Simpson to come forward to assist with this, and then I'll call Ken for the, uh, the reading of the names. You're going to do the responses. Okay. Let us remember the kindnesses of God as we remember those lost to us during times of war. Let us remember the courage, the devotion to duty, and the self-sacrifice of the men and women in our armed forces for the toil, endurance, and suffering of those who were not in uniform, the support of those who sent all they had to defend peace. We will remember them. Let us remember those who perished in air raids in their homes, those who fell in battle and are buried at sea or in some corner of a foreign field, and especially those whom we may have known and loved, whose place is forever in our hearts. We will remember them. Let us remember those who were our enemies, whose homes and hearts are as bereft as ours, whose dead also lie in a tomb of everlasting remembrance. We will remember them. Let us remember those who came back, those whose lives still bear the scars of war, those who lost sight or limbs or reason, those who lost faith in God and hope for humanity. We will remember them. Can you say this? They shall not grow old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down, down of the sun and in the morning, we, we will, will remember, remember them. them. I invite Ken to come forward to read the honor rolls. The reading of the honor roll. World War I, 1914 to 1918. James K. Donaldson. Frank G. Early. Wilfred Hunter. William Linder. Alex McClelland. Joseph A. McClintock. World War II, 1939 to 1945. Lloyd W. Bigham, William A. Bigham, George W. Donaldson, Crawford W. Hodgson, Charles T. H. McIntosh, Gordon H. McClure, Lloyd E. McCrimmon, Robert H. McKillop, Jack E. M. Nixon, Almer C. Rain, John C. Robertson. Let us now hear the last post. Robert H. McKillop, Jack. E. M. Nixon, Almer C. Rain, John C. Robertson. Let us now hear the last part.
Let us pray. Most gracious God, creator of all mercies, we offer our thanks for the bounty of your providence and the renewing liberty of your grace. We offer our thanks as we rejoice in our inheritance in holy things and in the freedom and peace in which we live, one for us through sacrifices large and small, earthly and divine. Eternal God, you are the shepherd of our souls, the giver of life everlasting. On this day when we remember your great works and commend to you those who lived and died in the service of others, we are glad to remember that your purposes for us are good, that you gave Jesus Christ for the life of the world, and that you led us by the Holy Spirit into the paths of righteousness and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now hear God Save the Queen. Let us do the litany of peace. Where there is hate, may we so love. Lord, make us a servant of your peace. Where there is hurt, may we forgive. Lord, make us servants of your peace. Where there is strife, may we make the world one. Lord, make us servants of your peace. Where all is doubt, may we so faith. Lord, make us servants of your peace. Where all is gloom, may we so hope. Lord, make us servants of your peace. Where all is night, may we so light. Lord, make us servants of your peace. Where all is tears, may we so joy. Lord, make us servants of your peace. Jesus Christ, our Lord, may we not seek to be consoled, but to console, nor look to understanding hearts, but to look for hearts to understand. May we not look for love's return, but seek to love unselfishly, for in our giving we receive, and in forgiving are forgiven. Dying we live and are reborn, through death's dark night to endless day. Lord, make us servants of your peace, to wake at last in heaven's light. Amen. Let us hear the national anthem.
Please be seated. I invite Regan to come forward to offer us the prayer for illumination and the reading. Please join with me in saying the unison prayer for illumination as is, is printed in the bulletin. Let us pray. O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, we pray may your word remind us of your steadfast love for us. Amen. Each year, as we approach Remembrance Day, we take time to read out two lists of names of those who fought and died for our freedom. But these are more than just a list of names. Each name has a story, a story of someone's life. These are the names of fathers, husbands, brothers, and sons of our congregation, the St. Andrew's family, our family. When we say their names, we tell their stories. By remembering them, we honor them. Today, as we honor their sacrifice, we are reminded of Jesus' sacrifice and of the cost of God's love for us. As we prepare to read and listen to God's word, let us be attentive, for God is speaking. Today's first reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verses, 19, verses 9 through 17, which can be found on the Remembrance Day insert. <clears throat> As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. Word of the Lord. The second reading is from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 16, verses 3 through 16, which can be found on the Remembrance Day insert. I commend, you, I commend to you our sister Phoebe, a deacon of the church at Sensory, so that you may welcome her in the Lord as is fitting for the saints and help her in whatever she may require from you. For she has been a benefactor of many and of myself as well. Greet Prisca and Aquila, who work with me in Christ Jesus and who risk their necks for my life to whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Greet also the church in their house. Greet my beloved Epenetus, who was the first convert in Asia for Christ. Greet Mary, who has worked very hard among you. Greet Andronicus and Junia, my relatives who were in prison with me. They are prominent among the apostles and they were in Christ before I was. Greet Ampliatus, my beloved in the Lord. Greet Urbanus, our co-worker in Christ, and my beloved Stachys. Greet Apelles, who is approved in Christ. Greet those who belong to the family of Aristobulus. Greet my relative Herodian, Greet those in the Lord who belong to the family of Narcissus. Greet those workers in the Lord, Tryphena and Tryphosa. Greet the beloved Persis, who has worked hard in the Lord. Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and greet his mother, a mother to me also. Greet Asyncritus, Phlegon, Hermes, Patrobus, Hermes, 
and the brothers and sisters who are with them. Greet Philogos, Julia, Nereus, and his sister, and Olympus, and all the saints who are with them. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the churches of Christ greet you. The word of the Lord. Well, that was quite the list. And often when one is working on something to preach on, you don't tend to choose to preach on lists. Because, well, what can you talk about? And besides, all of those first century names will be hard to pronounce. So, Regan, you did a great job. It is a strange list. But... It is also an important list. But to be honest, though, regardless of how important the list is, nobody, while we know a bit about a few of them, in fact, one of the people named in this list went on to be uh, the Bishop of Antioch and was a very important person. But the others, well, were less so, but were important enough for Paul to mention them. They lived and they died 2,000 years ago. Prisca and Aquila, Mary and Rufus, Andronicus, Junia, Herodian, and the family of Narcissus. Must have been a lot of mirrors in that house. That's quite the list, though. But it's not just a list. It's a list of names. Every church that I have been in has at least one list of names. Names listed alphabetically on brass plaques like we have here on either side of our sanctuary or on granite slabs that are mounted on the wall or handwritten in calligraphy on now ancient and aged paper in frames. And these are the names of those who died for Canada for freedom, for us, during the two world wars. Names that many of my generation, and in fact also probably most of the next generation, don't know. But for those who were in the war, those who lost someone, those who lived through it, whether it was on the battlefield or in the areas where the, the war was taking place, or here at home, they are more than just a list of names. For us at St. Andrews, these names were the former members of this congregation, those who made up, served, and attended this church, those who sat in these very pews and sang in the same hymns and offered prayers, celebrated life, baptisms, weddings, and observed funerals. Each name has a story, has, has a story behind it, of the person behind it. A story, some personal connection to each of us, to you and me. That's why on Remembrance Day we read out the list of their names so that we can remember them. Paul's letter to the Romans is a, a, a long letter full of a lot of theology, but he takes the time at the end of his letter to make it personal. And as was typical in the day, because the letter tended to be something that was handed around or went from church to church to church, he took the time to acknowledge the people who may well have been sitting there hearing their names read out. And he does this by greeting them, which was a way of saying thank you, acknowledging their sacrifice and their service. And there's 24 people 
uh, possibly friends of who were known and who worked with or cared for uh, or were, in fact, uh, tutored or mentored by Paul. And there were 12 he knew well. Priscilla, as I mentioned, Aquila, Junia, Pelles, Paris, Rufus and his mother, who was a mother to him. And I know in my life there were times when uh, my, growing up as a teenager, I spent so much time at my friend Leah's house that Barb was kind of my own mother. There are, interestingly, seven women and five men in that intimate group. Men and women who were Greek and Roman and Jewish, who were rich or slaves or freed or craftsmen, all of them ordinary people, except they were singled out by Paul for their extraordinary service and sacrifice. Paul give, gives thanks for his sisters and brothers in Christ for their faith, despite the threat of persecution and death. For being a Christian in those days was, meant, was in essence, a life sentence or a death sentence. And for their sacrificial love, as, they, as Paul himself says, they risked their necks for me. These were people who also, uh, who, who also knew and loved Paul. And he had relationships with them and prayed with them and feared for and loved and missed. They were his sisters and brothers. They were his mother. But it wasn't just a list of names. They were family. Not by blood, but by, blood, by love. And what makes this list special is that it is made up of the names and people who had faith and love enough to give and to commit their lives out of love for loving others. This really is a list of names and love. And this is what binds our two readings together. Now, Remembrance Day, as I'm sure you've come to realize, is a, a, a personal uh, day for, uh, for me in many ways. And it takes, as I said to uh, uh, Simpson uh, rather late last night, it makes Remembrance Day a harder day uh, to preach and to have a service because everything about Remembrance Day is tied up in my grandfather, Jeffrey Dean Johnston. Now, I did a little bit of search on that, and Jeffrey is uh, a, an old French, German, English amalgam name, and it tends to mean God's peace. And one of the things I did was I looked to see where Jeffrey stands on the baby name list, and it's not very good. Uh, 990th out of 1,000 on the babyname.com list for boys. That's why Jeffreys are so special. <laughs> but our family was the exception because there were three, or three Jeffreys. My grandfather, Jeffrey Dean Johnston, who I knew as Papa, my uncle, also Jeffrey Dean Johnston, who I knew as Jeffy, because we had to keep everyone separate, and when we were all together, we had to be able to identify each other, and me, who was known as Thumper, which we'll get into another time. But sadly, now I am the last Jeffrey standing. And what's also interesting is all three of us became Presbyterian ministers. My grandfather died 42 years ago when I was 16, and I remember him growing up as uh, living out his nickname, which was Bear, and his bushy eyebrows and the smell of pipe smoke, lighting matches on the corduroy seat of his pants. But what I remember him the most doing was leading the Brantford Remembrance Day services at the Cenotaph as the honorary colonel of the local regiment. And I remember standing there in awe as he not only led that service, but relived all that he went through. 
In the past, I've talked about Walter Stevens' book, In This Sign, which is a, a, a very detailed book about the history of Canadian uh, chaplains in the Second World War. It's a dry read, but it's a very interesting read. And his book details the mundane and also heroic work done by the Canadian chaplains during World War II. And he quotes my, father, my grandfather's uh, reflections about the hardest task assigned to him as a chaplain, that of counting the casualties, the dead, and preparing the list of names for processing. Last year, I had a picture of, of uh, my grandfather at the Dieppe service, and I also had uh, um, Molly Harvey's father standing right next to him. So when I speak of, of my grandfather, I'm also speaking of, of Molly's father as well as a chaplain, they were tasked with the hardest part of what it would have to be in their ministries. And that was on a daily basis to provide a Christian farewell to the men, as he says in, his, uh, in the quote, to the men uh, who died and to write a personal word of strength and comfort to the proud but sorrowing loved ones. Over and over again, the administering of the rite of burial and the writing of, to unsuspecting but soon to be grieving families about the loss of their son, their brother, their husband, their father, was described by my grandfather as the heaviest of duties. But they were also acts of respect, love, and remembrance. In past years, I have come with some of the uh, pictures that I would... Uh, inherited when my grandmother died, and one of them is a, a picnic or a collage of pictures uh, of cemeteries. And it seems sad that most of, in fact, almost all of the pictures we have of my grandfather in the Second World War revolve around cemeteries. But it makes sense, because that was, in a large part, what he had to deal with once the war became real for the Canadians. And in these pictures, you see row upon row of white crosses and raw earth and fresh graves. And these were the graves of the bodies that were identified. These were the graves of those names that were recorded. These were the graves of those names on the telegraphs that Muriel had to deliver. Each year, we gather to remember. We say and hear their names, and we, if we know them, we tell their stories. Those who served, regardless of when, were our fathers, husbands, brothers, sons, boyfriends, mothers, wives, sisters, classmates. The list is long, but the connection is intimate and short. Each answered their generation's call to respond to love one another, to lay down their lives and to sacrifice their love for others. By remembering and reading out their names, by living out and acknowledging that our lives were won at a terrible cost, we are consciously deciding that their deaths were not in vain and that they will not be forgotten. This is what remembrance and remembering means. It is an active response to love, and it is a call to love one another. In his final conversation with his disciples, Jesus in our John reading, the simpler reading, explains the importance and the power of love and of our need to live and to die by it. That love is only complete when it is given and exchanged and offered freely and wholly, just as he and God did and does to and for us. That we are to submit and surrender and sacrifice ourselves to love one another. But all of this abiding and love in this passage 
takes commitment. The relationship Jesus is calling us into is the one he has had with us in which he died for us. As he says, this is my commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. Friends, experiencing God's love in Christ means bearing the cost of expressing Christ's love. An act he describes as the ultimate expression of love when he says, no one has greater love than this than to lay down one's life for one's friends. Out of love, Jesus came to be with us because of, of, because of love. And because of love, he died for us, giving us his life and giving it away to us and for us. In his final words to his disciples, he tells them and us that the test of our love for God and for others is to do the same. In the John reading, when Jesus talks of love and life, these are really interchangeable and exchangeable words, which are also to be given away. Paul talks later on in Ephesians about this, but takes it further when he says, be imitators of God as dearly loved children. Live a life of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. This love goes beyond mere emotions to being about life itself. But it does more, and it goes further. It sacrifices its own needs and wants so that other, someone else's needs can be met. And it freely lays down its life so that others might live. This is the love and commitment and sacrifice that we remember today and every day as we read out the names of those who died to ensure that we could live. So, as we read the names of those St. Andrew's members who fought and died on our behalf, let us remember them and give thanks. For there is no greater love than this. And let us live a life worthy of their sacrifice. For these are not just lists of names. They're names of our brothers and husbands, fathers, sons. They're our names. It's our story. Amen. Let us now hear hymn 732, O Day of Peace That Dimly Shines.
Friends, in memory of those who died, may we be better servants called to sacrifice. And in gratitude to God, may we live as those whose lives are not their own, but who are bought with a price. We are privileged to contribute out of our abundance, out of our freedom, which we and our children enjoy. From those who paid the ultimate price, we are also challenged to give just as generously of all that we have and all that we are. To whom much is given, much is expected. Freely we have received gifts of salvation and grace. Freely we shall return to God what is God's in the form of our offering. At this point, I want to say thank you to all of you who have supported and continue to support the ministries of St. Andrews. I want to thank those who have mailed in their donations, and uh, please do that rather than dropping them off here at the building. Uh, the mail gets redirected. We also want to thank all of you who are on the PAR program. And if you want to know more about the PAR program or about how to donate online, you can go on to the, the link that is in the bulletin or go to the church website and find the Donate Today page, and it will help you figure out uh, what is best for you. And as we prepare to have the offertory prayer, let us hear the doxology. offer up the unison prayer of dedication that is in the bulletin. Let us pray. Gracious God, accept these gifts as we give them in grateful remembrance of the many sacrifices made on our behalf. May they further your kingdom in which love triumphs over hate, justice over evil, and life over death. Amen. I invite you to look for the prayer of remembrance that is on the uh, act of remembrance uh, sheet that is part of the online bulletin. Let us pray together, or let us pray. Loving God, you are the giver of every good gift, and we remember today that one of your gifts is peace. You have blessed us with freedom and provide for all our needs. O oh oh God, God, help, help us, us never, never to forget, forget your, your gifts. We remember those who gave their lives in two world wars, in the Korean War and in the conflicts in the Gulf and Afghanistan and elsewhere. And we know that their sacrifice was part of your plan for us, for our peace and freedom. O oh oh God, God, help, help us, us never, never to forget, forget the price they paid. Lord Jesus Christ, you said that people have no greater love than to lay down their life for their friends. You lay down your life for us, and you call us your friends. We remember those who were killed or scarred in wars and laid down a piece of their lives for us. Oh, oh God, God, help, help us, us never to forget, forget your or their sacrifice. sacrifice. Holy Spirit, we remember the homes and communities, the workplaces, schools, and families that raised and sometimes lost these brave men and women who heard your call to fight for your dream of peace. May we live up to their example and accept the peace that you have offered to us through the love of Jesus Christ. Oh, oh God, God, help, help us, us to accept your offer to live in peace. peace. We remember that you are the source of peace and justice. We pray with all our hearts for peace in our times. Bring true peace to those places of con where conflicts rage in Syria, Iran, Afghanistan, Yemen, Sudan, in Nigeria, and many other places. Oh, oh God, God, help to bring, bring an, an end to, to hatred and, and give us peace. peace. We hold up before you, O oh God, all those who work for peace 
our Canadian Armed Forces, our Canadian peacekeepers, the RCMP, and those who work alongside them. May they together know our support and prayers as they show us what it means to live and die for peace. Oh, oh God, God, help, help us, us to be your peacemakers peace in all we say and do. We, we pray through Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, who taught us this prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I just want to remind you of the Zoom fellowship. The link is in the bulletin. It has been the same as it has been uh, all, all, all along. Uh, we hope to see you there, but it will take a couple minutes for us to get started. I invite Regan to extinguish the Christ candle. The light that was in one place at one time was changed. So it could be in all places, at all times, in this room and in yours. O oh, sleep in peace where poppies grow, the torch your falling hands let go, was caught by us again held high a beacon light in Flanders' sky. That dims the stars to those below, you, you are our dead. You held the foe, and ere the poppies cease to blow, we'll prove our faith in you who lie in Flanders' fields. And still the poppies gently blow between the crosses row on row. The larks, still bravely soaring high, are singing now their lullaby to you who sleep where poppies grow in Flanders' fields. Friends, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you today, now, and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>